Hi everyone, welcome to this special presentation which is going to kick off my weekend with Lee and the Z's. But for many of you, you may not be joining the weekend workshop and you might just be here experiencing this video. So welcome, hi, I'm Lee. I've been an energy intuitive and a channeler for 20 years now publicly doing this work. And one of the things that really showed up for the year of 2024 was that 2024 was energetically going to be a year of strength for all of us. That our strength was going to be in focus. It was going to be a big theme of the year for us as a collective. And that we were perhaps going to have to dig deep to cultivate that strength and that the cycles of evolution and healing and growth and challenge that we're going through right now, we're going to induce this strength. So Weekend with Lee and the Z's was born because there are a few different live events that I'm doing uh, in the coming months, but they are all focused in North America at the moment. We hope to be bringing uh, the tour and live events to other parts of the world. But also because I have done some more ongoing channeled experiences, channeled courses that last four weeks. So we thought for those of you who can't attend any of the live workshops or it isn't really your thing maybe to do a four week program, we thought what if there was a weekend where I would work with you live, those of you who choose to participate, and it would be a combination of me channeling my guides the Z's and also me bringing through intuitive guided teaching and information. Now, full disclosure, the way these things work for me is I never quite know what's happening until we get there. So in coming to record this video for those of you tuning in, the two words that I was given were power and light. So not only are power and light going to be the focus of this video? They will also be a huge theme for Weekend with Lee and the Z's. So in a moment, I'm going to channel and we'll see what my guides have to say. I'm often asked who the Z's are, what they are, how many of them are there? So many, many years ago when I first met them, it's now about 24, 25 years ago, I was told they were my guides and I developed this relationship with them where I would ask them questions and they would say things that would sometimes blow my mind, uh, often piece together things that I couldn't work out myself. So a relationship issue I was having or something that I was dealing with in my own healing process that I couldn't get to the bottom of. They would say something and it would open, open the whole thing for me and put the lights on. Now the interesting thing about working with any channeled information is they are not in the human body and the human experience the way we are. And I was a self-growth uh, aficionado. Like my thing was going to self-growth workshops, shamanic workshops, anything that was helping me develop who I was as a human and uncover layers of myself. So that's why in my work today, I like to combine the self-growth energy intuitive side of my work with the channeling in combination because people will sometimes make the assumption that I'm living from my channeled information all the time and I'll say no, not at all. Sometimes I am and I can always go to it and use it and include it in my worldview but other times I have to go through things as a human and sometimes I deliberately don't talk to the Z's for a few weeks while I'm going through a, a learning process but they have definitely changed the way I see the world, perceive the world, my own intuition and my senses. So for those of you that are new to channeling, having now done this for 20 years publicly, one of the biggest, I think, not very talked about aspects of the effect of tuning in on channeling is it opens up your own intuition, your own connection. Sure, there might be some really interesting information that comes through a channeled message that really opens your mind or opens your heart or causes an emotional release because channeling is a vibrational frequency. So it might sound like words, but actually if you're open to it and if it resonates with you and if the channeler and the message resonate with you, often you can really open. 
But the one thing that I have come to understand is that really channeling has the power and the ability to tap you more into your own senses and intuition. For some people, they'll see a channel at once or tune in on one channeled thing and they're open. For other people, it might be something that you come back to time and time again and it helps you tap into that part of us and this part of us that I know we most of us weren't educated in. Certainly, I grew up in a very traditional Western world education system and also my family. I didn't come from an overtly spiritual or even religious family. So I wasn't necessarily taught any of that stuff when I was a kid, yet I was having these very deeply felt experiences that I couldn't understand or put my finger on. So the Zs have explained that they are a group of 88 beings who then extend wider into source energy. I'll try and make that more simple for those of you who though maybe those terms aren't so familiar. What they've said is, yes, we're 88 beings who essentially work as a cluster. They said, but we're not fixed. They said, none of you are fixed. So myself, I'm a composite of every person who's ever taught me, influenced me, challenged me, given love to me, been tough on me. You know, we become this version of who we came here to be as a soul, but also how we've experienced human life and how that has affected us and how that has either allowed us to grow in certain areas or shut down, compress, contract. So we go to healing work of any kind, whether you like therapy, whether you like yoga, whether you like sound healing, whether you like channeling, or you like all of them, we go to these things to open out again and become connected to universal life force, spirit, so that most of us get what we're looking for, which is to be able to live both in the land of the human and the land of the soul. And the Zs explain that even though they are 88 beings, they say, well, we're not fixed the way you are. You know, you, I will understand myself through this one body, through this form, and through this name I have, and the life experiences I've had, and the story I could tell you about the 47 years I've had on the planet so far. But they say, even that's a myth. Even that's a very fixed point to you but they're not discounting our human experience. They're not saying we should just completely go beyond it and let go. But the reason to come back to this point that they extend wider into source, they said, think of us as a consciousness library. We are connected to many different aspects of the universe, not just Earth, the universe as a whole. And we can draw on and pull in different pieces of information, different strands of energy, as required. The reason I know this to be true is in working with groups, I always notice a difference. So even talking to you now, yes, we're not live in the room together, but the way I work is part of me has opened to this conversation that we're having right now. And you're hearing me a certain way. Uh, someone else will be hearing me a different way, but there is something going on that is connecting us. And that is not necessarily anything other than what we could be tapping into every single day. We're all intuitive. We're all connected spiritually. We all find different ways to work with intuition or different belief systems around spirituality or religion or faith, but it's here and it's around us all of the time. So my personal human Lee intention with Weekend with Lee and the Z's is going to be to hold space for you to not only uplift yourself, but expand yourself. For you to be able to step out a little more and feel a little fuller in who you are. Not necessarily full of yourself or, uh, you know, uh, boisterous towards other people in a way that, that's negative for them, but so often we have learned to tuck away parts of ourselves. We've learned to hide or suppress aspects of who we are, either because people didn't want them or we didn't think they were welcome or we didn't think we were allowed. 
And now, because I've been a student of self-growth and spirituality for 31 years now, it's been interesting for me to see how those small tweaks and changes that we can make that open us out, they may not even be that visibly noticeable to another person, but they make a huge difference in you living your life as the soul you were meant to be on earth in this time that we live in right now. I'm no different to many of you, I'm sure, in that this is a very tumultuous time on earth and you you look out there and you see what's going on and you feel what's going on and it's intense. Weekend with Lean Disease is going to not so much focus on the outside world. There's a time and a place for that and I give enough attention to that in other aspects of my work. This is going to be very much about your inner world and about who you are becoming in this year of 2024 and beyond. And the thing that the Z's have talked about is we have the ability, even with all the tumult in the world, and in fact because of it, to become more of ourselves and to bring more of who we are to bear on the outside world. So with those two themes of power and light, that is what we will be really focusing on. So for those of you who aren't joining me for the weekend, I'm going to channel uh, for a little while now and we're going to see uh, what uh, nuggets can come through for you. But what I would encourage you to do as you listen is you, you're welcome to leave your eyes open because you will be able to watch <laughs> the screen. But generally, I advise closing your eyes simply because you can have a deeper experience. When you close your eyes, you go into your own internal world and you absorb the message in a different way. Don't worry if you lose track of what I'm channeling. If you zone out from the words, you know, sometimes people will panic and go, oh my God, I didn't hear anything because I drifted off. That's perfect. What happened is you went into your higher mind. You went into your visionary mind. You went into your expansive mind. Much like music can move through our inner body, you know, it can either get us dancing or it can get us feeling in a really beautiful way. Channeling has the ability to walk you into the inside world of your soul and to reconnect some parts of yourself that perhaps you haven't connected with either in a while or sometimes forever. So with all of that said, uh, I wanted to give a little explanation for those of you who are perhaps new to the channeling uh, or haven't really experienced it. And I think one of the things I really am clear about now is how to use channeling because you are using channeling. It's not doing something to you. There's nothing channeling can do to you that you don't allow it to do. But you are using it to open up higher aspects of yourself, bigger aspects of yourself, and allow them to be present in the room. And what I've noticed is as you do that work and as you allow it to move through you, what you start to become more comfortable with is love as the baseline, a sense of peace, awareness and presence, which I know all of us, you know, work to cultivate or it, for many of us, it's our favorite experience. It's not something we're always able to sustain or maintain. And that's par for the course with being human. But the more we lean into those feelings and the more we experience those feelings, the more galvanized they become and the more we become calibrated to it. So that's enough from me. Uh, let's go to the Z's and the channel and the message which I believe or I'm told will be focused on our power and our ability to connect to and work with light. <clears throat> hmm. Good. Uh, tumultuous times, yes, but power building times also. Whenever the ground is electrical and moving on earth, you as humans get to move upward inside yourselves. Not always comfortable, by the way. Mm, think of major events that happen on earth that you perhaps uh, prefer not to experience. 
On the personal level, these might be sudden or dramatic shifts in relationships that leave you with a sense of loss or longing or shock that a person that you were once close to or uh, perhaps even a family member or a dear loved one is either no longer in your life or no longer alive on earth. In those moments, you go through what many of you name grief. Uh, we would say you go through an enormous transformation in those moments. So yes, as a human being who is grieving, there can be so much sadness, so much pain, and so much loss. And all of those are true experiences when you are going through them. But what is also going on behind the scenes and draws a little less of your focus at the beginning of the process of grief is an almighty transformation. You are moving from being someone in relationship to another and you are instead reorganizing your inner self so that that relationship that you were in with them starts to transmute in and through you. It is why many humans will say uh, when a loved one passes uh, that uh, the qualities that that loved one possessed they will deeply miss. And yet, it is often the qualities that that loved one possessed that they will deeply become. So for example, if you had a friend in your life who was exceptionally kind and all of a sudden they pass away or uh, they move away and you can no longer be in contact with them or perhaps your path goes in two different directions. Some of you call this friendship breakups. We would say you come out of alignment with that person. And that is designed to happen for many of you. You cannot hold on to every single person that you meet in your life, but it doesn't take away the power of their love, their light, their effect on you. You are all affecting each other in the most powerful ways. So, when this mm, loved one mm, disappears, this loved one that you say was so kind and you miss their kindness, you either find someone new to bring in that kindness, or most of the time, you all become just a little more kind for a couple of different reasons. You were given the example by that friend, and while that friend held that kindness as the almighty example, when they are no longer present, you need to feel it a bit more because you have identified it as a beautiful quality. So, you start to become a little more kind, but also, especially in the case, and really, truly in the case of mm, those who have passed over, many of them will become part of your team. So, for example, uh, many of you who miss terribly your past loved ones, those loved ones will eventually, once they have gone through their own review process when they first leave the earth, and that can take anything from three to 12 months, depending on the soul, the individual, the life they lived, and the appropriateness of that soul's contact with those left behind, uh, for many of you, that soul will become part of your angelic team. Uh, someone to watch over you, stay in touch with you, keep an eye on you, support you, love you. So you see, in that way, your journey as a soul is quite eternal, and you are always in transformation. One of the things that can be tricky for you to understand as humans is the relationship between your human self and your soul self. And we understand this is mm, a little of a challenge for you because you are right now in your human perspective as you should be. You should be able to, as Lee would often say, keep one foot on the ground as well as one foot in the sky or mm, mm, in the universal energy, uh, source energy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you see, for all of you, and this is the important piece, for all of you, you are constantly in transformation, but there is a speed at which you can allow yourself to transform when you start to reconnect with your consciousness. When you start to reconnect with your consciousness. Some of you are very good at reconnecting with consciousness through others. So it might be an inspiring person in your life, an inspiring friend, a wise teacher. Perhaps uh, this very presentation you are watching right now is one of your ways to reconnect with consciousness in the world, in yourself. But 
if we were to tell you that the power of your own personal consciousness, the ability of this human body of yours to be an instrument and a vessel of consciousness while you are alive, if we were to tell you that it is extraordinary and the reason you don't turn all the lights on all at once is for many of you it would literally blow your circuits. If we were to tell you that in the next two to three years, for many of you tuning in on this, you will go through an extraordinary evolutionary leap, we would be telling you the truth. Now, we understand that some of you like evolutionary leaps, you like the idea of it. Oh, how lovely, an evolutionary leap. Well, remember, evolutionary leaps are sometimes what you would call hard won. They are sometimes something you experience because of almighty propulsions. But we know right now many of you are being asked to focus on the outside world and all that is going on on your planet that seems unstable, tumultuous. And yet, if we were to say to you that the finest use of your focus in the coming two to three years is going to be to create a deep relationship with yourself, your soul self, at an all new level, and that there has never been such a supported time on earth for this to take place, we would be curious how you would respond. Does that excite you? Does that simply feel true? Are you already aware of it? Does that scare you, this idea of becoming more powerful in your own relationship with who you are on the planet? Because the person that many of you are often afraid of is yourself. The person that many of you are often afraid of is yourself. And this gets projected out onto other people in your life, and that is how human life rolls. So you might be afraid of a certain person in your life. But the truth is, for many of you, unleashing the full power of your soul, your consciousness into your human life, that is the scariest of all. It needn't be, and in fact, it is becoming less so for more and more of you on the planet. Yes, even as you witness others who seem to be going the other way, that is also how energy balances itself. But if you were to not be so concerned with the outside world as much as you have been, and you recognized that you are about to go through a two to three year cycle on this planet that will take you through 2027, that will put you in the opportunity of more power and more light than you have ever experienced running through your system, we would ask you to lovingly invite it to say, I allow my power and light to gently arrive in me now. I invite my power and light to gently arrive in me now. Notice the use of the word gently, ha, because you don't want it to come in like a waterfall, that won't necessarily do any of you any good. But if you allow the power and light to slowly increase inside you, you will be able to remain in vibrational harmony with most of the people around you. You will be turning the light and the power up so slowly that it will invite others to connect with you in that increase, rather than feel uh, walloped out of your energy field because all of a sudden you have gone through some almighty transformation. So you see, for many of you, when we say you are afraid of yourselves, it is usually your spiritual selves that can be the most fearsome to you. And this is very buried, by the way. This is not something most of you are walking around uh, thinking about or indeed blocking, quite the opposite. Those of you tuning in on this, apart from the small number of you who are just here because you are curious, most of you tuning in on this, you are looking to make a deeper relationship with not just yourself, but with life itself. Because the more power and light you have in your heart, in your awareness, in your mind, in your ability to interact with and relate with the outside world, 
the more you become an alchemist for good on the planet. And one of the things you have to be very careful of in those brilliant minds of yours is to recognize you can't do everything. This is a vast and diverse planet and none of you can do everything. If there are areas of the planet that you feel compelled to work in to bring more power and light, let those areas be enough. For you will overwhelm yourself if you look at the whole planet and wonder what you can do, what you can bring to bear. So, what we are inviting you to recognize is this will be a time of shedding skin. Now, some of you are a little mystified that we say that because you say, well, I've been shedding skin for the last two, three, four, five, six years. Well, good. You are going to have a very accelerated journey into more of your power and light. And for those of you who perhaps recognize that you are shedding skins, old layers of identity, more recently, perhaps the last six to 12 months, prepare yourselves for the power and light that is going to run through you in coming years. The beauty of this human personality that you have will not go away. It will simply illuminate more and more. Are you ready to allow yourself to reconnect to your origins, where your power came from, and to have more of a daily connection to the forces of light that are on the planet. Remember this term, light workers, that some of you feel an identification with and others don't. It is important because the planet has both light and dark. That is how it works. That is the nature of the current vibrational level of Earth. But for those of you who are light workers, it doesn't mean you avoid the dark or uh, you do not experience your own uh, moments within darkness in yourself. But it does mean you are here to weave with the light. And if you are here to weave with the light, you need to connect to it regularly. And as you connect with light regularly, it will show you how to weave in ever finer ways. Take a moment to just breathe in for a second. Slow and steady in through the nose and out through the mouth. Some of you may not be able to perceive this, but many of you will. Right now you are connected to power and light. But more importantly, Right now, you are power and light. You are generating both. Every fiber of your being and every alignment within your energy field is pulsating power and light. Some of you are a little frustrated about how slow it can be on Earth to bring that power and light to bear on the rest of the world. But remember, when you are here to birth new energy, particularly in physical form, sometimes it can take a little time for the rest of the world to be ready for what it is you want to unleash on it. So don't be frustrated. As we said earlier, Power and light, when increased steadily and gently, has the most harmonic effect on other humans, other places. Power and light, when unleashed in dramatic ways, can be seen by some others as combative, and they will react against it. So, for those of you who have tuned in on this message, you may be feeling a little lighter in your being, a little more connected to your intuition, a little more aware that you are far bigger than you believed yourself to be so far. And for those of you for whom this message is the beginning of Weekend with Lee and the Z's, we look forward to working with you on embodying, 
cultivating and letting out more of your power and your light. It will be good for you and good for the world. Ha! In peace, in love, in power, and in light to all of you. Thank you everyone for tuning in and I, uh, I hope that something in the message you can take away in your heart, in your mind, into your life. And for those of you who will be joining me for our live weekend, Weekend with Lee and the Z's on March 23rd and 24th, can't wait to be with you. And for those of you who've, we always get this question, if you want to be part of it but you can't necessarily make the live broadcasts, then absolutely, as with all of my courses, all of the live pieces are archived for you and you get full access to replays and you get lifetime access to all the material. So I look forward to working with you all. And if you just tuned in for this video, sending you lots of love, lots of light and lots of power. Take care.